Hi, I'm Simon Can. Welcome to Synthesizer Bootcamp. This is the first video in the Synthesizer Bootcamp series, so let me quickly tell you what these videos are intended to cover, and more importantly, what they don't cover. The Synthesizer Bootcamp videos are intended to be short, each video will only be a few minutes long, and focused, each video will only look at one subject. Each video looks at specific areas of synthesizer functionality. In other words, what the controls on your synthesizer do. Once you have a firm grasp on what the knobs do, then you'll be able to take control of creating your own sounds. This first video looks at modulation and how the various elements within a sound can be pulled together by modulation. Modulation doesn't make any sound. If you look at the audio path in a synthesizer, you will usually see that the sound starts at the sound source, passes through a filter, and ends in an amplifier, which is connected to the output. If you want to change a sound, for instance, if you want to change the filter's cutoff frequency, then you twist a knob or slider to set the sound. This is good as far as it goes, but there is no animation. The sound is static and does not change. This is where modulation comes in. Modulation is the process we use to change a sound over time for each note that we play. There are several tools we use for this, but they mostly have a similar purpose. To increase a level, or to decrease a level, and this change will often be applied over time. In other words, the modulator will twist the knob to change the sound in a consistent manner for each separate note. There are two key elements in modulation. The modulation source and the modulation destination. The modulation source is the tool that creates the modulation and the modulation destination is the function that is then changed. So if we work backwards and start with the destinations, if we look at our audio path again, the main modulation destinations will be the pitch of the oscillator, the cutoff frequency in the filter, and the volume level in the amplifier. The extent to which a modulation source will have an effect on the modulation destination is then often controlled by a depth control. The depth control will determine whether the effect of the modulation source on the modulation destination is subtle or less subtle. There are many modulation sources that are available to you. The two most common sources are envelopes and low frequency oscillators. An envelope is a single shot device. In other words, it starts, it executes its level changes and then it ends. Unlike an envelope, a low frequency oscillator will repeat its cycle to continuously modify the sound. For this video, I'm not going to talk about how to use envelopes and LFOs, but I will look at the controls on those modulation sources in greater depth in later videos in this series. In addition, there are two other modulation sources which are often used, but which do not then vary their level over time. Instead, they have a constant effect over the whole of the length of a note and as a result will often be used in conjunction with envelopes and low frequency oscillators. The first of these modulation sources is pitch. For instance, you could open up a filter's cutoff frequency as higher notes are played. This would mimic the characteristics of many real instruments. The second modulation source is velocity. In other words, the force with which a key is hit. Again, this mimics the behaviour of real instruments where a note may get louder and brighter as it is struck harder. As you would expect, there are other modulation sources, but these are the ones you will come across most frequently and which you are most likely to want to use. So how do these modulation sources and the modulation destinations all get joined together in practice? 
If we start with our three modulation destinations, pitch, cutoff frequency and volume, and add some modulation sources, an LFO, two envelopes, and velocity, then we can start to hook them up. The first connection might be to attach the LFO to the oscillator's pitch. This is just a connection. We don't have to set the depth of the modulation. The second connection might be to assign the first envelope as the modulation source for the filter's cutoff frequency. Once we've made that connection, we could attach the second envelope to the volume. Finally, to add some real-time control, we could attach velocity to act as a modulation source controlling both volume and cutoff frequency. By assigning two modulation sources to one modulation destination, we can add detailed levels of control to our sound. That's the end of this video. If you want to know more, then take a look at the other videos in this Synthesizer Bootcamp series. You should also check out some of my books about synthesis, which cover the issues raised in these videos in much greater detail. In particular, I suggest you look at How to Make a Noise and Becoming a Synthesizer Wizard from Presets to Power User. Both are available from all leading bookstores, including the online stores. You can find out more about Synthesizer Bootcamp and my books by visiting my website, noisesculpture.com. Thanks for watching. I hope to see you again soon.